Hey everyone, Eric here. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how to build an upside downside financial model for investors. By the end of this video, you will understand how to build one of these models as well as the strategy and context behind them. So first we're going to walk through a setup and then we will jump into building the model. Okay, so let's talk about the setup. So there are basically two types of investors that you'll probably be building these models for, where you show sort of a base case scenario, an upside, and a downside. The first are venture capital investors. So venture capital investors are trying to invest in outlier companies. They know that 50% or more of their investments will probably go to zero, but they are just trying to hit the one investment where they make 100x or 1,000x or 10,000x. So always remember what they are trying to search for in a startup, and that's massive upside. Private equity investors, on the other hand, they don't want any of their investments to go to zero. So they are much more um, sensitive to, to risk. So they want to see reasonable growth, but more than anything, they want to see that the business is low risk so that there's not a lot of downside. So venture capitalists don't care as much about the downside, they care more about the upside. And private equity, it's almost like they care a little more about the downside, although they want to see growth as well. So remember who you're talking to when you build one of these models. So there could be sort of two types of investors as well that you'd be presenting these models to. The first would be prospective investors, meaning people that are thinking about investing in your company. And if that's the case, remember, you want to just get them really excited about the potential. With current investors, if you're submitting a budget to them, the biggest thing you don't want to do is miss your budget. So probably you're not trying to get them as excited as much as you're trying to set yourself up for success so that later on you can say, hey, you know, we hit our numbers. So these models are generally for prospective investors. Your current investors, probably you're not going to be showing them upside, downside as much. But for, for prospective investors, they want to understand sort of what, what do these scenarios look like. So I'm going to be covering this for venture capital prospective investors. That's going to be our audience for this video because I basically work mostly in startups, early stage startups. So the downside scenario, you want it to be conservative, but still a good outcome. The base case scenario, you want the results to be great, defensible. The numbers, you can say, hey, these numbers are quite reasonable, but aggressive. So one thing you need to know is that investors are going to haircut your numbers if you're talking about valuation, no matter what you say. You can say, um, hey, you know, we put in this very conservative model as our base case. They're going to haircut it. So put in a really good outcome for your base case. Upside is if everything goes perfectly. So what is sort of an outlier upside scenario? Um, you just want to paint that picture to get people excited. So overall, you want the investors to think that even the downside is good and the upside is enormous. So again, you're, if you're pitching investors, you need to make sure that you're selling them on the idea. So the setup is that we are building an ad monetized technology platform. So for the users, the technology is free, like a social media platform or any other type of website. But we are monetizing by creating advertising, basically real estate on our platform and, and monetizing the users through ads. So. There's two processes that you can use to build one of these models. First is rebuild a very simplified version of your business on one page. This is what I would recommend, and that's what we're going to do in this video. The second one is you can tweak your larger, more robust financial model and just copy in the numbers for the three scenarios. So you can basically um, change the numbers, so change your pricing, change your churn rates, change your monetization, et cetera, and then paste the numbers in for your downside scenario. Then update all your assumptions and paste them in for your sort of base case, and then update them and paste it in for your upside scenario. And if you do that, you want to make sure to call the drivers out that you've changed at the bottom of the model so that people can follow along. So let's jump into the model here. So the point of these models is that you basically show your entire business on one page. And so here's the basic setup. So you're, you're going to have like the prior year of, of actuals, historical numbers, and then you're going to show three scenarios. One is the downside for, for, the, for the next year's budget. The next one is the base case for the next year's budget. And the third one is the upside. So you're going to show, okay, our downside scenario, how much growth is that versus last year? Our base case scenario, how much growth and upside scenario. So let's walk through some of these assumptions and I'll show you how to do it. So in 2023, 
we are saying, and we're saying 2023 has already passed, and that's the historical numbers. So users, we're gonna say it was 365,102 users, and the average revenue per user, so the average basically advertising revenue per user was $4.01, so the total revenue was the total users times average revenue per user. We're saying that cost of goods sold are basically just hosting and customer support. And one thing I wanna highlight is this is an overly simplified model. A real business would have more categories than this, but I'm just gonna cover the concepts and the strategy, and then you could build out a slightly bigger version of this for yourself. So you have your gross margin, so 85%, and that's what you wanna see for a software business, probably 80% to 90%. And now we have operating expenses. We say we have payroll, marketing, miscellaneous, and um, we burned basically $860,000 on 1.5 million in revenue. So this is the perfect type of business for raising venture capital to scale towards your break even, which could be a year or a couple years out. So let's look at some of our assumptions because this is what we're gonna be tweaking here in this model. So first off, we have our average revenue per user. So this is our ad revenue. Okay, and then we have our users. So you have new paid users and new organic users. So what does that mean? So we have new users and recurring users. So new users are people that came onto the platform for the first time in 2023. Recurring users are people that joined the platform in prior years, so 2022 or before. So we're saying that our recurring users represent 40% of the prior year users. So that's a user retention rate of 40%. So to start this model, what we're gonna to need to do is figure out how many users we have. And from there, we can build everything else. But in order to understand how many users we have, we first need to figure out how much did we spend in advertising. So, in terms of paid users, we spent $932,000 in ads in 2023, and that got us 89,503 paid users. Paid means that these users came directly from our paid ads. Organic means that these users came in from free channels. So maybe they came in from search, maybe they came in from word of mouth, et cetera. Usually when you grow your paid users, those paid users end up bringing uh, free users along with them. So your, your organic will kind of follow your paid. So we spent $932,000 and we got 89,503 paid users. So on a per user basis, that costs us $10.42 to get a new paid user to the platform. But if you look at our total users that were new, so total new users, basically we spent the $932,000 and we got 265,000 new users. So this is your paid CAC, which means your customer acquisition cost, marketing cost per new user. And your blended CAC is marketing cost per all new users. So we spent that amount of money and on average, it costs us $3.52 to get a new user. Okay, so now let's kind of build out our forecast. So let's say for our downside scenario, we say, okay, what is our average revenue per user? Let's say it's the same, it's $4.01. So that uh, the downside is that we are not able to monetize our users further. A lot of these big social media platforms that advertise a lot have average revenue per user of $40, $50 uh, per year. So $4 is, is not very much. Next, let's look at our organic to paid ratio. This is the amount of organic people that come in compared to the number of paid. So like I said, the paid people will kind of bring organic people along with them as you get these network effects of the network of your users growing more and more and more. So let's say in our downside scenario, we have the similar ratio. We bring on a certain amount of paid users and about two times as many new organic users come in. So now we need to figure out what is our marketing budget. So our marketing budget, let's just say is, in this scenario, is gonna be uh, 1.5 million. So we're increasing marketing by 1.5 million. And let's say our paid CAC is, is the same. Let's say that our user retention is the same. So we're basically saying, you know, if all the numbers stay the same, average revenue per user, 
ratio paid to organic, you know, user retention, and your paid CAC, your blended CAC, this is kind of what our financials are going to look like. So we're going to have 572,000 total users, and this is going to be our revenue. And so that's kind of where we're at for our downside scenario. So we haven't looked at any of the costs yet. So now we can kind of work through that. So in 2023, I basically said, okay, our hosting was a certain percent of revenue, and that's going to probably be a flat percentage of revenue. And customer support, I said, is a certain percentage of revenue. Basically, what I said is that, however, you know, wherever the revenue goes, these costs are going to stay a steady percentage of revenue because those are directly related to the number of users that we have. So we can keep those the same. Marketing, of course, we had to use to forecast users. And full-time employees, let's say if we grow you know, the number of users by 60%, our full-time team was seven, and I'm saying that we're going to grow it to 11 people. Again, this is an oversimplified model. You'd want to build out a full payroll model, but I'm just trying to help you understand the context, the strategy. And miscellaneous percentage of revenue, let's say 9%. So you can see here that in our downside scenario, like I talked about, users are growing 60%, revenue is growing 60%. Your gross profit is obviously growing um, from 1.2 to 1.9. And so we're saying that in the downside scenario, you know, revenue grows a bunch. Um, margins stay the same. Okay, so what about base case? So base case, we want to show that our numbers are improving over time. So what would that mean? First off, numbers improving means you're able to monetize your users better. So let's say your average revenue per user starts to go up. It gets from $4 to $4.25. And this is the base case. And let's say in the upside, it goes from $4 to $4.75. So we're you know, being, doing a better job monetizing all of our users. Let's say now in our base case that our sort of paid to organic ratio increases. So let's say it's 250%. And let's say this is 300%. And technology businesses, due to the network effects, generally have increasing um, sort of organic user growth that outpaces their paid growth. So these numbers are very defensible. These numbers are reasonable, but they show an uh, improving business. And so this is why we put this as, as the base case, which is that you know, none of these numbers are going down, but they're not sort of going up in a way that seems unbelievable. So also, let's go down to the marketing and say that, let's say we, we put in the same marketing budget for each year. So the difference between these scenarios is just if we're able to improve our unit economics, you know, revenue per user, better user acquisition, et cetera. So in terms of customer retention, let's say we put this here at 45% and this here at 55%. So we're able to keep more customers from falling off the platform. And let's say in our base case scenario, our paid CAC was 1042, but now it's 950. And now it's 850. So our blended CAC, you can see, was 352. Now it's 271. Now it's 213. So again, your base case is obviously going to be an improvement off of the prior year. And so um, let's take a look at kind of where we're at so far. So we're saying here, basically, that in your base case scenario, your revenue is going to go from 1.5 million to 3. So you're up over 100%. You're monetizing your users better. Um, your gross margin is staying at a very high percentage of revenue, 85%. And so this is the kind of thing you want to see. And the, the reason why you build downside, base case, upside in a very simple way is so that an investor can go through the sheet and understand exactly the sort of most important elements of your business. You know, this would be like a cover page on your larger model just so they can say, hey, can you just show me like, show me the opportunity so that they don't have to go through this long financial model. Okay. So now we have the base case and the upside. And the upside, we're going from 1.2 million of gross margin to 3.6. And so revenue up 200% year over year. Now let's look a little bit at the payroll. So let's say, um, you know, if we do grow the users by, you know, 96%, then we're going to have to grow the payroll a little more. 
So we're going to grow it to 13 employees. And in this scenario, it's, it's 15 employees. And the average employee makes 145000 um, across our, our startup. So you can see the payroll growing here. But again, in this scenario, payroll grows in line with sort of revenue growth. But in this scenario, you can see that the payroll is growing slower than revenue. And in this scenario as well, payroll is growing slower than revenue. So where does that incremental cost savings go? It goes to the bottom line. It goes to the profit. So this business is going to be improving its profitability um, by scaling its OPEX and getting a lower customer acquisition cost. OK, and finally, let's say miscellaneous percentage of revenue. So this is just our catch all bucket that's just like everything else. And let's say that you know, the more we scale our revenue, the, the lower our fixed costs get as a percentage of revenue. So we're saying we spend 150 in 2023. And you know, in this scenario, we have uh, three times as many users, but we only needed to double the miscellaneous expenses. So this would be like consultants, legal, software, uh, rent, travel, all this other kind of stuff. So again, you could build these all out in separate categories, and you should if you're doing this with real investors, but I'm just trying to help you understand the strategy. So let's go back to our strategy. Downside, conservative but good outcome nonetheless. Is this conservative? Well, it's, it basically shows that none of our metrics are improving, but the revenue is growing at a nice pace, and so it's still a good outcome. You know, you'd need to keep raising money, but for sure, if you have this robust revenue growth and these types of numbers, you could raise additional uh, venture capital money. Now let's look at our base case. Is, ba is base case great results, defensible, but aggressive? So great results, growing more than 100% year over year, profit margins improving, um, gross profit growing a lot. So this is great. I mean, it shows you're able to monetize your users better. You're Customer acquisition is improving in terms of your efficiency. Uh, your customer attention is improving, and you're able to scale your payroll. All this is defensible. This isn't taking us from four to ten dollars. It's just four dollars to four dollars and twenty-five cents. So it's it's very defensible, but it's a great outcome. And then upside. This is if everything goes perfectly. What kind of upside are we looking at? So, you know, if we're really able to increase the ad load which is the number of ads we can show to each user in a given time period. And we start to get a lot of viral organic growth. You know, user retention hits 55%. I wouldn't call these numbers extreme. I would just say, you know, this is if things go really, really well, and it's totally possible. And that's kind of what you want to paint the picture of. You know, our CAC is steadily decreasing, and, you know, you, you grow the payroll a bit. So this business is getting close to break even growing its revenue tremendously. And so I do think that this, this is kind of like, if everything goes perfectly, what kind of upside are we looking at? This is a good scenario. So you'll see that even the downside in our model is still a good outcome, but the upside um, shows that the business is on a really, really good trajectory. Okay, I hope this gives you some perspective on how to present your upside and downside financial model scenarios to your investors. By the way, my Finance for Startups training program is now live and I'll be opening up more space shortly. So make sure you're on my email list if you want to do finance trading and get personal support from me. As always, in the description below, you can download this Excel file completely for free. And if you found this content valuable, please like and subscribe to my channel. Only 10% of people that watch my videos subscribe to my channel. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.